Welcome to Business Coaching Secrets with Carl Bryan. If you want to attract new high-end coaching clients, fill live events, and build a wildly profitable coaching practice where business owners pay, stay, and refer, you've come to the right place. In this podcast, Carl provides his keys to the kingdom for finding and signing high-paying clients and building the coaching business of your dreams. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, coaches around the world, welcome to another episode of Business Coaching Secrets. It's your boy, The Road Dog, with none other than the man, the myth, the Caribbean legend, Carl Bryan is in the house. You like that one? Shoot. Buddy, well done, man. I was cruising along on a Disney cruise uh, in Caribbean islands. Where did I go? St. Thomas, Castaway Island. Another one I can't you know. Tortola? Tortola? You ever heard of that? Anyways, yes. Yeah, so you have. The, the question I have for you, because knowing you, did you try to negotiate your way up to try and steer the vessel? Did that happen? <laughs> No, I did think of getting Sage in there, though. I did okay. think about it. <laughs> well, you know, it's just uh, just one of those things, bud. Uh, I just uh, I had a feeling you were probably trying some negotiation to. It's funny. You, you always just say it's for Sage. Really? Really? Is it, though? <laughs> you know, it's for you, bud. It's okay. It's okay. I got her in last time we were in a plane. I had actually not the last time, but we, we had her in the cockpit. Truthfully, I knew the pilot, so maybe there's a little bit of a I had a bit of an advantage, but I got her in there sitting in the pilot the pilot seat. So there you go, shoots. There you go, bud. There you go. You're big, you are a big deal. For those of you that don't know it, this guy <laughs> is the biggest shooter like that I've ever met. It's unbelievable. Hey, listen, um, we had a lot of uh success, a lot of good feedback on our, our rapid fire um sort of questions when I just fire the match in, you don't take 25 minutes to answer one. Um, <laughs> I always joke folks that it's like, oh, okay, well, Carl's got that great. I'm just going to go do the dishes and, and, you know, vacuum the house before I get to the next question. But anywho, uh, I just thought maybe we could do some rapid fire if you're, if you're down and game for that. Do it, shoots. Let's yeah. do it. I'll do my best to keep it tight. Promise. Famous last words. Famous last words. All right. Um, I say ideal client. What do you say? Um, you say ide I ideal client. Yeah. Yeah. Just like that. Um, <laughs> <I'm gonna be> <laughs> what if I'm not ready? Um, no, so, uh, ideal client. Okay. So you're a business coach. Um, look, here's a question. Which client is more likely to stay long term? If you had a client with a $20,000 unit of sale, and let's assume that there's $10,000 of gross profit there, or like let's say that's a roofer. So a roofer, they charge 20 grand for a roof on average, and it might be more and it might be less. Just play with us. Um, and then there's $10,000 of gross profit. Um, is that client going to stay longer or a massage therapist where they charge $100 a massage? And let's assume that there's you know, there's eighty dollars of um, profit there, right? Maybe even seventy, depending upon overheads and gas and whatever they're doing. Um, anyways, no doubt you're thinking high unit of sale. One of the things you want as a coach is you got to make sure that your clients have um, let's just call it a twenty-five thousand dollar unit of sale with fifty plus percent gross profit margin. If your client doesn't have it, let's assume it's a chiropractor. You want to help them create it is one of one of not the first order of business, but one of the first orders of business. Um, so high unit of sale road dog would be part of it. Um, also, look, what's the what's the number one characteristic of a super, let's call it a world class performer? And that's the Jordan. That's the Oprah. That's the Steve Jobs. It's LeBron James. It's Roger Federer. It's Michael Schumacher, et cetera. What's the number one trait of those guys? And the answer is hunger. So I want to like, do I have, um, I had a conversation with one of my staff earlier today um, to say she is hungry would be like understatement on steroids. And it's just like, okay, we got to find, 
like if you have somebody who's super duper hungry, what do you got to do? And you got to find a bigger role for them, right? So, so answer. Um, I want to know that my client is hungry. Uh, presumably, that's something you you kind of flesh that out. They're not going to wear a sign or have it tattooed on their forehead, but through some Q and A. Um, okay, so what are your current revenues? They say one million. What's your what's your goal? I don't know that I want them to say a billion because then I think they're totally unrealistic. They go from a million to a billion is a bit of a joke, right? Like again, a million seconds is um, eight days and then a billion seconds is 32 years. So to pretend like you're going to go from a million to a billion, I think they're delusional. That's not what I want. But to go from 1 million to 10 million, I think that that answer comes from a client who's hungry. And when I say jump, they'll say how high instead of why. Um, speaking of that, I want my client to be compliant. I always, when I signed up retail, what I, what I'd refer to as a retail coaching client, but like a coaching client, that's like paying a monthly fee to do, you know, weekly, bi-weekly and monthly calls with me. Um, they had to come to a live event. They had to see me do a live event. And for the simple reason that I found that those clients were significantly more, um, compliant, right? Like you get it, like, again, I say jump and they're not like going, hey, why? And want to question everything. And not that I want yes men or yes women either, because I do want somebody, you know, with some leadership skills. But hopefully you're getting that. I like the idea of them being compliant. Um, and then Road Dog, I would maybe finish that off with niche. So who am I going to go to? You know what I mean? Like I have absolutely no experience in, you know, like let, let's just use manufacturing as an example. Like I'm not like a manufacturing guy. Um, so therefore I don't think that I would go and pick a niche in manufacturing. So what I would do, like I used to own a sports stadium. Um, I could go and help a sports stadium falling off a log. And I dare say that you know, these, this guy or gal could be in business for five years and I could walk in there, even though it was decades ago that I owned it. I feel like I could walk into that sports stadium and in many ways know more about the company than or the industry and the company and then running a profitable sports stadium. And they do, uh, by the way, that might sound a little overconfident, but hopefully you get the idea. But I am stupidly confident that I could help a sports stadium like falling off a log. That would be a good niche for me. Why? Because I have experience and I have expertise. And the other question is, do I have passion? And the answer is at this current stage of my life, the answer is no. So I am not going to help a sports stadium anytime soon, uh, but I will help a business coach because that's where my passion lies. But my way of saying shoots, um, I would encourage them to think about going to a niche. And then when they're thinking about what kind of niche, I'd be thinking about what are my passions? Uh, what are my experience um, tell me? And what does my expertise tell me? <clears throat> so that's my answer shoots, ideal client. But the biggest, a big one, um, is a high, I don't know, high unit of sale, going to the financial planner, going to the mortgage broker and having them cancel in 90 days. It has a little bit to do with, they got to get a lot of action to cover your fees. Um, so sometimes it, it ends quickly. So that's my answer shoots. Well, speaking of a guy who likes a lot of action, there you go shoots. Hey, listen, by the way, um, you, you talk of hunger. I just want a quick aside on that. Do you find that sometimes when you have those clients that have a lot of hunger that they they try like pretty much everything is is half the battle just getting them focused yes. on doing the right yes. things rather than doing everything yes yes and yes good good point by the way i like that um look if you really think about focus um like it's it's just about eliminating do you know what i mean as opposed to getting if it rather than trying to get focus which can be really hard right road dog you know that i know that anybody listening i'd imagine knows that so rather than thinking about i got to get focused what you got to do is eliminate things right like we often talk about like you know like the amount of time that you light on fire deciding what to eat would blow your mind right and not to mention getting the groceries and driving to get the groceries um you know what i mean and then getting them in the freezer and getting them in the fridge and then going, Oh, what are we going to eat? Honey, what are you going to eat? And they go, what do you feel like? And it's just around and around. She goes having a pre-planned meal for seven, like seven days in advance. It just blow your mind how much time, energy and focus that it will save you. And then you can take that time and channel it into, you know, running your business or, you know, we talk about driving a car again, like Uber, like, you know, th there are very successful business people who have limb, you know, like they have a driver, and they have a car waiting and they get in the car, they would never ever think of getting in the driver's seat 
because they're sitting in the back with their phone, with their laptop working while they're, you know, fighting traffic, et cetera. Um, that's an example, which by the way, is that realistic for somebody listening? Maybe, maybe not. But I will tell you that focus, rather than thinking about focus and thinking about dialing in and getting focused, if you think about elimination of everything outside the goal, if it doesn't make the boat go faster, as they say, just do your best to eliminate, delegate it, or completely, you know, put a line through it. I think that can be helpful. So yeah, shoot, somebody who's hungry could have like that multiple streams of income and ADD type thing going on and you, you got to channel it. Yeah, I know all about that. Uh, shiny objects in your buddy. It's a real thing, right? Um, <laughs> My God. Uh, all right. Uh, I got one here for you. Need to get results for a client in record time. What do you do? <clears throat> Boom. Um, uh, let's look, okay. So let's just, let's just assume that this is, um, let's assume this is a company doing 500 grand for sake of the argument. Um, I just look, I'd, I'd go to look, Revenue, real simple. Um, Got to go to five areas on their financial statements, by the way. Look at their revenues. How do you jack them up? Look at their expenses. How do you decrease them? Um, look at their accounts receivable. And do they have a problem there? If they do, stop everything and solve that problem. And you'll pay your way immediately. Um, look at inventory, which they may or may not have it. But look at inventory. And then... Um, and the last one is look at accounts payable, um, which, by the way, is not going to be on the average person's radar. But again, that that sweetheart syndrome is the accounts receivable and accounts payable issues where you forget, you know, you never want to collect your money because you don't like to bother people. And then you want to pay everybody up front because you don't like to be in debt. Um, just imagine what that's going to do to your cash flow. Um, so and. What I just did, um, if you introduce me to a business that says, wow, I have this profitable company, but where the heck is my cash? There's five areas you look, and it's revenues, expenses, accounts receivable, inventory, and accounts payable. So if you want to get a, cl a client results immediately, putting cash in their bank account is kind of where my mind went. So that those are the five areas that I would be looking at. And they're doing 500 grand. Uh, and by the way, they might be doing 5 million. They won't be doing 1.5 million. They might be doing 500,000. Um, but this is, um, I'm looking at their financials and going there. Nothing, call, you don't need to be an accountant to do what I just described. Very insanely easy. Um, and then uh, three. So I think I'd dummy this down and I'd go three, I would say like three baskets, like with our company, focus.com. We help coaches and we help them in three areas. We help them generate leads, we help them convert those leads, and then we help them fulfill on the coaching commitments from those conversions, right? Leads, conversion, fulfillment. I think with your client, if you dummied it down and a more complex business might need to, you know, alter those slightly, but most companies you'd be pretty close. You might call fulfillment throughput, by the way, but follow me. Just look at lead generation and how are you helping them there? Um, go to conversion, like what kind of conversion do they have? And you'll always, you'll look, when you speak to a business owner and you ask them their conversions, almost always 50% is as low as you'll hear. 75%, um, I've heard 100% at different times, you know, and like lots. When you really do the math, it's closer to 25%. So there's a really, really good chance that they're completely out to lunch. Um, on their conversions, and by the way, on their leads, the amount of leads that they're con they're bringing in, the conversion that they've got on them, um, rather than take them at face value, do a little bit of homework there. Have them do a little bit of homework, uh, you know, put together a spreadsheet and just be able to, you know, weigh all that. And then fulfillment, you know, like how good are they at actually doing um, the thing, you know, and and do they have upsells? I would help them create that. Um, have a look at their operations. Look at their management around operations, generally speaking, um, pretty average. Like, are they retaining clients? Do they have the opportunity to turn what they have into a membership slash recurring sale company? Um, I'd absolutely be, you know, helping them in that regard. Example, a chiropractor, you, you put a chiropractor on the phone, and I've said this many a times, right? But this is very consistent with a lot of businesses, dentists as well. Um, you go to a chiropractor, you get short-term relief, and you stop coming, right? 
the, the chiropractor has got to create a better model than that. Um, otherwise, they're just going to be frustrated like crazy. And then the dentist is the exact same. Um, you come, you get your teeth cleaned. They go, you got to come back in six months. You say, great, I'll see you in six months. Next thing you know, 18 months later, you still haven't got your teeth cleaned. And you would have happily done it. You just you just didn't think of it or you missed the appointment. They didn't follow up. You know what I mean? Like that is really, really important. That falls into the fulfillment basket. Um, so that shoots. And, and maybe actually I said this in the um, ideal client thing, but like, do they have a 5,000, a 25,000 and a hundred thousand dollar offering? And remember, need to have at least 50% margin. So I don't want you to have a $5,000 unit and then it costs 4,000. So they're making a grand and think that we got anywhere, right? So like got to have at least 50% margin. So do they have a $5,000 product? Do they have a $25,000 product? Do they have a $100,000 product? Um, help them create that. An example, um, top of mind. Okay, so you got a networking. Okay, let's say that your client is a networking group. And then you go, okay, what do I buy from you? And they go, oh, it's a $1,000 12-month membership, right? So my question is, for the networking group, do they have a $5,000 platinum membership that gets them extra benefits, that gets some exclusive exclusivity that they otherwise can't get? And do they have a $5,000 um, thing? And most networking groups, private ones, will not. And you help them create that again the the chiropractor i mentioned earlier do they have a five thousand dollar or twenty five thousand dollar unit of sale and the answer is no and then they'll say yeah but nobody's going to buy the twenty five thousand dollar unit of sale the reason they can't sell it is because they don't have an educational process built into their uh, sales process and their business model um, but chiropractors all over the world sell $25,000 products all the time. So anyways, shoots. Um, if I wanted to get results for a coaching client in record time, those, I'm sure there's a lot more, but those are some of the things I'd be thinking about. Maybe raising their prices and lowering their expenses. I'm kind of I'm touched on that, here. but black Every, and white. So. Everything you just listed, there's so much there. It's almost overwhelming. It's it's funny how it's almost contrary to the the, the question before of the you know getting focused right yeah. it's just like how can you yeah. maybe this is a good question how can you become an ideal coach Ooh, so, there you go like I, I think is it just narrowing in on a few things that you just do so well and then the other stuff is just gravy on top like i just think that yeah. there's there's definitely something there right now with yeah. with that oh, go ahead yeah keep going I was just going to say, with that said, um, this kind of leads into the next question, actually, because a lot of, there's a lot of things, um, and we're hearing AI all over the place right now, right? Like Chat GPT, like it's just, dude, this it's everywhere. So I, I guess because the question is, how can AI help you get clients? But I, I almost want to broaden that out a bit. Like, how can AI just help you as a business coach? But let's just start with the client piece, maybe. To, just maybe yeah. just start there. Okay. Um, okay. Make sure. I, so, how does AI help you get? How am I going to use AI to help me get a coaching client? Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, become knowledgeable would be my short answer. Um, in fact, you know what? I sent out an email. Um, and it was like, uh, it was <laughs> dentist. <laughs> I, you'll like this road dog, but I made a funny like, so, you know, I have a very bent nose and a lot of fake teeth. And it's not because I'm strong. Anyway, so my dad used to always say that I had a, uh, I had a big mouth and little fists. <laughs> right? That's like, how'd you get eight big teeth? Oh, my kid, he's got small fists and a big mouth but anyway so i'm talking to so dentist and i have a bit of a love-hate relationship i've spent a enormous amount of time sitting in a dental chair so then what i basically said are like what are the pros and cons of um ai for dentists and it's like pros i can't remember all but it's like you know there's a um, appointment scheduling like the routine tasks that a dentist would have right appointment scheduling um, patient communication for sure, especially like sales letters and community, uh, you know, regular letters to go to and from, you know, answer common questions, 
uh, management of medical records, um, and analyzing dental images for sure, right? Um, you know, there's going to be AI dental tools that are going to help with precision and accuracy um, in a very big, bad way. It's absolutely going to be able to reduce administration costs. Um, there's got to be a way, and again, I'm not a dentist and I don't know, but there's going to be a way to identify dental issues, um, you know, easily, quicker, um, earlier, and more accurately, right? Like those things are going to exist. But the question is, is the dentist, you know, like an old school dentist, it's like the iPhone, you know, you're going to delay, 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 delay the adoption of it, or the dentist is, and I'll ask you, is that a good idea, right? But really importantly, um, positives for a dentist is it's going to, AI is going to be able to help with the simple, easy cases, and it's going to free up the dentist to do the more profitable and the more difficult stuff, which by the way, I don't need to speak to a dentist to know, do you like doing the cleaning or do you like doing you know, the, the more complex stuff and the root canals, et cetera. And with a hundred percent certainty, the dentist, if, you know, it's a professional and somebody who loves the craft, they absolutely like the more difficult stuff, which is going to be great. The same way, like with an accountant, the accountant, they hate tax season. It drives them nuts and just being compliant with the government, getting these tax returns done. Like they hate that, but they love helping their clients. So one of the things we do and why we have so many accountants that work for us, we go to the accountants and go, well, look, the compliant work, you want to be doing the higher level stuff. You want to be creating financial statements and helping them read the financial statements and way more importantly, go and adjust these financial statements so they end up with a significantly more profitable company. And then instead of charging $2,000 a year to the chiropractor, you can start charging $20,000 a year to the chiropractor, but actually work on the stuff you want to be working on. Right. So the AI is going to allow um, dentists to do that. And by the way, it's going to allow um, accountants to do it as well. Right. But they're going to want to do that. Um, so look, so the positives, I kind of listed a few, but, you know, those automated and routine type administration stuff, it's going to take a lot of that and the simple procedures and the dentists are going to be freed up to do more profitable stuff. And then the negatives, though, again, positives, I would encourage you. I always talk about standing against. Um, you know, like you make more of a statement when you stand against than when you sing Kumbaya, how wonderful everything's going to be. How much if you're going to be out there talking about the positives and negatives or uh, positives of artificial intelligence, I would highly encourage you to be talking about the flip side of that. And that's the negatives. Right. And like, what is that? And I can tell you with 100 percent certainty, the initial cost to implement um, artificial intelligence and in the average dental practice are going to be reasonably high. And is that going to accelerate them to adopt it or is that going to make them take pause? And then think about those that take pause. Are they going to be um, advantaged Are the ones that go all in quicker? Are they going to be advantaged over the long haul? And we know the answer, right? But it's a, it's, it's, it, this is psychology 101 to get over that, right? They're going to lose a little bit of personal touch. That's going to happen as well. But a real disadvantage and a negative is just a psychology, like without meeting the average dentist, like are they going to be really excited about the new challenge and the time consuming nature and the costly nature of adopting artificial intelligence? Or like I said a second ago, are they going to run to it? And the answer is obvious. And then if you could help them with that psychology and encourage them. Uh, you'd be doing real well. It's going to increase competition as well, by the way. Like it's going to enable people to go and use telemedicine and uh, remote um, monitoring. So <clears throat> that, you know, is a negative. And I think that they should be, um, you know, I think they should be on point. Um, so I'm trying to think. There was some other negatives. I literally wrote this last night, by the way. Um, but, oh, privacy, like, like privacy, right? Like, you know, when you go to the dentist, you got to fill some stuff out and then you got to like talk about, you know, like some medical concerns or medical issues that you might have. Like, you know what I mean? Like that can't be a fun thing to be writing on the dental dealio. Um, what if that information became a little more, do you know what I mean? Like that could be a negative for sure. So, so the bottom line is road dog. Okay. What did I just say? Um, you want to get clients using AI 
like anything, everybody loves the teacher. When you can educate people, you know, you'll just go into a different category in their, um, you know, in their, uh, what, what am I trying to say? They're not attractiveness, but you know what I mean? Like their connection, their rapport that they feel with you. So I'd be educating them similar the way I just did. And I've got to tell you what I said in the email is something to be effective. If I'm at a dentist and then I spit, look, here are some of the positives I see for you. And then here are some of the negatives. And I listed, you know, like three and three or five and five. Um, I, I don't know, whatever I say after that, I got to tell you, there's a really, really good chance, assuming I've got some confidence and some mojo. But I say, look, if you'd like to get together for 15 minutes, I would be more than happy to provide you that 15 minutes. Um, and you and I could chat about this a little bit more in depth. And you could speak to me a little bit about your concerns and what you're seeing um, and, and what you see, you know, with yourself adopting AI. And I would <clears throat> be too happily, you know, too happy to guide you. I think that would be a really easy call to schedule. And then, by the way, I get them on the call and I would very, very quickly uh, turn them from, look, AI is great and we should be on top of this, but hang on, let's have a look at your current business and make sure that you're operating on, you know, all cylinders. Like, let's have a look at your pricing. Let's have a look at the model that you're following. Let's have a look at, you know, your admin. You know what I mean? Like, basically, then what I'm doing is selling them on, like, in our world, we would get together and do 100 grand in 45 minutes without them spending an extra dollar on marketing or advertising by a profit acceleration software and the jumpstart 12. But ultimately I'd be asking them questions, you know, do you have goals written down for your company? Do you have a sales process? Um, have you ever looked at your, you know, your PL? Have you ever, you know, looked to uh, tighten the expenses on your PL and how to look at what kind of impact that would have on your profitability? Yeti, 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 yeti. I'm asking them questions around that. Um, do you have a, you know, you, do you have a brand? When I look at your website, does it look the same as your ad? And does that look the same as your business card? And the answer, do you have a business plan? Do you have a marketing plan? I'm going to be getting like, no, 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 no. And that's like little cut, little cut, little cut, little cut, little cut. So it's really easy after that process, which is the one that we teach with the software to say, look, do you want a little bit of help with all this stuff? And they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so blessed that you came into my world. Absolutely. And uh, how much is it going to be? And next thing you know, you get a coaching client. So shoots. Um, there's a few different things I would be doing with AI, but I'd be coming knowledgeable myself. Uh, pros, definitely cons in a specific industry and all of which, you know, initial costs, uh, personal touch, increased competition. This is going to be the same in like a lot of industries. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, that's my answer shoots. That's what I would say. That's what I would do. What do you think? Okay, so real quick, uh, it's funny you, you talk about dentists. I actually think it's one of the mo most misunderstood industries because I've worked with dentists before and it's just everybody thinks that they're rich and everything else and it's like uh, not typically the case. But I want to ask you because when you're talking about all the things that you can automate, right? It just it reminds me of all the things that a lot of people just don't do. So off the cuff question here, um, recessionary times. Okay, so in that time space right now where there's going to be a lot of shifts, what industry do you think has been the most complacent that is going to suffer the most? Hey, good question. Um, what I mean, industry? I'm totally, putting you, totally putting you on the spot here, but I just, I'm just. Curious. By the way, do you have somebody? I'm curious if you have somebody. Like, do you have a niche in mind that you're looking? Who? Um, he think well, we don't I always do this. I, I always take, dude, I always take a look at real, realtors, right? When the market's good, it's like, oh, this is mortgage brokers. This is the easiest business in the world, right? Yeah, of course. Times are good. Interest rates are low. Like, it's amazing how many people, interest rates in Canada are now going back up to, for a mortgage, is like five, five and a half percent, right? To you and I, that's that's still a good rate. Like, that's 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 nice, right? To a lot of people, they're like, oh my gosh, 5%. They, they never experienced 10, 12% mortgage rates before, right? So I just, th yeah, that's, so that's good. So I'm going to answer um, just business. Uh, you know what, shoots? Like it's almost like 80% of them because, like, so what I'm going to say is that businesses that have been having major wins over the last, let's call it three years, like, well, what does Warren Buffett say? He says, when, when the tide, 
when the tide comes in, you see who's got their pants down, right? And like, so these industries like real estate, I think that's a really good example um, where they've had nothing but good times, good times, good times, good times, boom, they see some bad times and you see who's going to stand the test of time. And it's never very pretty. The exact same thing happens in the financial planning space and the exact same thing happens in the mortgage space to a lesser degree, but also like in the insurance space. Um, I think digital marketers have absolutely had nothing but, you know, like a field day um, for the last X amount of time. Um, and I think, you know, again, starting to feel it. So, so yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Shoots. It's just, I'm going to say it's like 80, I don't know if that's the best answer, but it's like 80% of them, but it's just people that have been having a real easy run for a period of time. The worst drive right back that literally said this earlier on a, a call with, um, the staff member I was mentioned earlier, that's like really hungry. Right. But I was like, um, Oh shoot. Hang on. I just thought, Oh, I just lost it. Um, Oh God, I just forgot it. Shoots, I can't remember. But but anyways, I'm gonna say 80%. Um those that have had great times for the last three years have dropped the uh the ball. Oh my god, I can't believe I forgot what I was gonna say there. But anyway, there you yeah, go. You know what? It's this is just a senior's moment, shoots. You're getting old. You're no uh, spring chicken anymore. <laughs> Listen. I'll, I'll just say this. Do, do you think it'd be a great idea to go after uh, any business that's been in business for five years or less right now because they don't even know what a bad time is and they have a feeling that something bad might be coming, but they have no idea the reality of what could actually happen? Like, I think you could scare the living crap out of these people and, and actually legitimately help them get prepared. Yep. Like, but I, I would go back to what we said earlier about ideal client. Like, show me their unit of sale, show yeah. me their margins. Do you have experience? Do you have expertise? Do you have passion around that? Are they hungry? You know what I mean? So, so I'd, I'd say, yeah, but it's a, what I would do is I'd put on a live event and if they came, they showed up, um, that tells me that they're my ideal client because they're hungry. They want to grow. It's like, yeah, it, you know, a company who's advertising is always good because they just wrote a check. They're using their credit card to try grow their company. It's like, that's a good client to have. And by the way, um, you talked about uh, having plans and stuff. <clears throat> I'm, I'm just actually rereading the psychology of money. And one of my favorite lines out of that is, a plan is only useful if it can survive reality. Nice. Is that Jason Capital? Who is that? No, that's uh, – hold on. Hold on. That's my uh, – it is uh, Morgan Housel. No, no, never yeah. Heard. Okay. yeah, really good book. Really, really good book. I, I'm really in, enjoying it again. It's just, um, yeah, it, it was highly recommended to me. So, but yeah. uh, anywho, so there, there you go. Shoots. That's, uh, that's that. Should we do one more or how do you want, like, I'm just looking at the clock here. What do you want? Let's do one more. Yeah, yeah. We'll do, Let's one do one more. more. Do one more. Then we're done. Okay. Oh boy. A big one shoots a big one. I'm just <laughs> going to ask, I'm just going to say one word and I just want to know what <laughs> What you have to say about it? I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Yeah, uh, consistency. Ooh, oh, there you go. Um, <laughs> that wasn't what I was expecting. It was a bit of a, it was a build-up <laughs> shoot. I thought I was gonna get thrown. Uh, okay, so consistency. That's good. I, I like that. Um, you know what? So, okay, consistency beats talent every day of the week, twice on Sunday. Okay. Um, you know what the problem is? Consistency is harder when you don't have people clapping for you, right? So then what's the, so if that's the problem, what's the solution? It's like, you know what? You, you got to clap for yourself. Um, and you know what? That's like the hardest thing to do, right? And it's just, it's like, um, uh, like when we're playing, like, you know, the NHL playoffs are coming up, right? And like, going to watch the games and like cheer. So people are like cheering for their hometown team. And this goes for NFL and it goes for baseball and it goes for basketball and it goes for cricket and it goes for your favorite tennis player and your favorite golfer, right? Like you're, you know, bated breath watching them, cheering for them, or it's Tiger Woods or whoever. Um, and then when it's you, you're not clapping at all. You know what I mean? And you, I really think you got to, you know what I mean? We got to adjust. If anything, you're going to adjust. If you want for like, no doubt you agree, consistency you know, consistency beats talent, right? And you should, because it does. 
Uh, but then it's like, okay, like I get that, but what's the solution? And it's like you clapping for yourself. Do you know what I mean? Like you um, acknowledging those little wins, those little wins, those little wins, but absolutely tracking everything, right? Like if you want to change your life, your results, you need to change something you do daily, right? The secret of success are found in those daily habits, that daily routine. Like you know this for shoots um, with the amount of time you spend in the gym and the amount of time you spend running. When you go to the gym and you don't track your results, and then you go to the gym and you do track your results, let's just say you do one month of tracking results and then you do one month without tracking results, the results on the month that you track are significantly, with capitals, italicized, bold, um, better than the months when you don't, right? So <clears throat> what are you tracking? Do you know what I mean? Like, do, do you have a scoreboard for your own business? Do you got like a um, you know what I mean? Like do you have a world record week. Do you have like the number of leads you generated today? The amount of revenue you generated today, the number of joint bench, gem, joint ventures you formed today. And then every day giving yourself a score. Imagine what would happen at the end of 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. It blow you away. How many calls you made? How many times did you pick up the phone today? How many prospective clients did you speak to today? How many, um, you know, how many comments on social did you do today? I can't remember what, um, what did um, Gary V say? He says, give your two cents 90, I might be messing it up, but it's like two cents. Uh, give your two cents 90 times a day. And what he meant was make 90 comments on social and your two cents is the comment. And at the end of, again, a day, a week, a month, 90 days of doing that many comments every single day. Well, according to him, and it worked out pretty well for him, you'd be really, 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 really busy. So at the end of the day, um, consistency, you know, it, it's absolutely um, a hack. It's like pro athletes are full of small towns filled with people that were better, that were faster, that were stronger. You want to know why? It's and sure there's a little bit of luck. And there's a bit of natural talent in there. But the truth is that the, the, the ones with talent, the ones without talent that made it to the big leagues, don't need to meet them to know that they had consistency. It's like Michael Phelps shoots, right? Like he came out, I mean, it's a number of years now, but he came out and he was like, like he almost didn't swim in the Olympics. He was just so, you know, depressed. And, you know, I mean, really, really challenged individual, which most super performers are very, very challenged individuals, right? Just get used to that. The surface and below the surface are two very, very different things. And he just said like, it was a total dog's breakfast, but, 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 if you look at him, he had done so much training and was so consistent for the last, I'm going to say, 50, I don't know what it was, but like 15 years of training that it really didn't matter if he didn't train the day or the day before the Olympics. And he still went on to win whatever it was, an insane amount of gold medals. I mean, he's won more gold medals than many countries, right? But at the end of the day, um, supremely talented guy. But if you asked him, and he's lots of interviews out there. It's just, it's the consistency. It's the showing up every single day, multiple times per day over, you know, a really, really long period of time. That's the, that's the difference between Michael Phelps and the other swimmers that might've beat him when he was young is he was talented, but consistent and they were talented, but inconsistent. Boom. And by the way, Michael Phelps might not be the best example there, but no doubt everybody's picking up what I'm putting down. Consistency beats talent. End of day. So I, that's uh, shoots, but but being able to clap for yourself and then knowing when to clap because you know when to cheer for your team and that's when the clock hits zero and you won. And you won game, you know, you win the, the you know, if it's a seven game series, when you won four games, you know when to clap. My question is individually, do you even know when to clap? And I think what happens is like, like, what's the reward for the next level? And it's a desire for the next level. Well, got to be careful with that, right? You, you're not clapping for yourself. What do you think, Shoots? Do you, do you like that? That's, I don't know. Uh, it, it's sort of like, you know, you have yet to find a mirror that you didn't admire. So it's uh, <laughs> same sort of same sort of principle. Oh, come on. Bill, uh, no, I, I want to ask you real quick, though. Um, who was your first role model in terms of consistency that inspired you to start being more consistent? Oh, Michael, 
I don't know if this is the right answer, but the the answer that comes to mind by a long way, Michael Jordan. There was a time, like you know, you've seen my office down, like my office in um, Canada. There, I had a picture of Michael. I had a picture of Steve Jobs up with my family. <laughs> Might be a little embarrassing, but Michael Jordan was like right there. And I, there was a time when I was like really, really, really into Michael Jordan. Like I just, I just loved the guy. So <clears throat> his, um, and I would. His, I don't know that it was con his consistency that drove me, more his hunger drove me, right? He was just so ruthless with wanting to be um, the best. In fact, one of the things, actually, I, our mutual buddy, Hunsey, I actually sent him, this was a while ago now, but like, you know, on my daily, I go to my calendar every single day. Um, it reminds me to watch a Kobe Bryant, 15-minute uh, Kobe Bryant um, video where he's getting interviewed and he's, He's just talking about just, you know, level of hunger and is, you know, has no interest in, you know, being mediocre at anything. And when he did something, he did it 100 miles an hour, specifically basketball, by the way. And um, so so I'm going to put Kobe, Michael Jordan, his consistency and hunger, I really, really gravitated to do towards and absolutely inspired me. But I also just want to put the late, great Kobe in there because he also um, – I, I think I think if you put Jordan against Kobe, that Kobe wins in consistency, but I think Jordan wins in the hunger game. So that's going to be my answer, Shoots. Okay, so last, real last question, I promise, and then I'll close this. <laughs> okay, let's do it. And that, that question is really simple. In the spirit of the NHL playoffs, the Leafs will lose in how many games? <laughs> Shoots, honestly, they got a shot. Let, let me tell you, oh, okay, you heard right. it. Let me, the Bruins do not win the Cup. They they broke as for non hockey fans. They have won, um, they have won like they they broke the record for the most points in a single season of all time by an NHL team. But let me tell you, when that happens, they peak too early. The yeah. Bruins do not win the cup, and I'm picking the Leafs shoots to win the cup. I, and okay, I'm serious. So I really think they. I think they can. I think. Okay, they will. removing your heart which is twisted in many different ways, thinking that the Leafs actually have a chance at anything. I agree with you. The president's trophy curse is very much a thing. Aside from the Leafs, who, who's, who do you got? Who's your dark horse? Dark horse? Um, Dallas. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I think they have got a, um, yeah, their goalie is unbelievable. I can't remember his name, but I saw him play last year and he was just a freak in the playoffs. He's unbelievable. And, um, yeah, Dallas, I think they they got a real shot, Shoots. They got a good team, man. All right. Well, there you go, folks. You heard it here first. You know what to do <laughs> when uh, you know what to do when Carl says something. Typically, the opposite happens when it comes to sports betting. So and there you, you go. We should wow. tell him. Like, my road dog, my – remember, I'd put – like, I'd literally put this out there on Facebook. What is – if you were to rank me out of 100 my, uh, sports betting, You'd how many times? 100, am I right? You'd be 102 out of 100 in terms of, <laughs> yeah. like, oh, yeah. it's, it's so embarrassing, isn't it? It's like, is. honestly embarrassing. I got it wrong so consistently. It was like, you, you know what? The oh, funny man. thing is, you, back to the same word I just brought up, consistency. If it's one thing you are with your picks, it's consistent, yeah. consistently wrong. And on that note, folks. Yeah. Um, actually, you know what? Uh, no, we'll, 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 we'll cut it off there. That, that was, I think a perfect <laughs> ending throwing. I started with throwing you under the bus and I'm going to end with throwing you under the bus. It's just a real good day for me today, folks. So that is it folks for another episode of business coaching secrets with the betting man himself, definitely not the King of Las Vegas, King Carl. But if you're not on the inside and getting access to the stuff that he actually really knows stuff about. Um, or getting access to his daily emails, the pre-show, want more information on profit acceleration software, visit focus.com today. You'd be silly not to do that. And if you enjoyed the podcast, please share, leave a review, do all the things that uh, you know that we'd want you to do. And that is it for another week, and we will catch you on the next episode. And as I always say, remember, folks, progress equals happiness. Take care, everybody. Carl Bryan built Profit Acceleration Software 2.0 to train business coaches how to find any small business owner more than $100,000 in 45 minutes without them spending an extra dollar on marketing or advertising. 
This becomes a business coach's superpower. So as a business coach, you'll never again have to worry about working with business owners that can't afford your high-end coaching fees. Check us out at Focused.com.